was hiding in his bathroom. He grabbed his 9mm pistol from under his bed, made his way to the bathroom in pitch black darkness, and fired shots at the door. This is a curious case of Oscar Pistorius, who murdered his girlfriend, Reva Steinkamp, on a Valentine's Day, grounding a nation to a stand still, and plunging the world into a decade of agonizing mystery and riveting obsession. Oscar Pistorius was born without fibulas, and his knees were amputated a month before his first birthday. He allegedly had a history of domestic violence, and though his relationship with Reva lasted only three months, they argued regularly during his hearing. He once shook so uncontrollably from crying and vomiting that he crumbled against the witness stand, and the court was adjourned. When Oscar Pistorius was born on November the 20th, 2nd, 1986. He never would have known that a month before his first birthday, his two legs would be amputated because he had no fibulas. Six months later, he learned to walk on fiberglass and was inspired by his parents to take part in sports until he injured his knee in 2003 while playing rugby. At six years old, his parents got divorced when he turned 15. His mother died from an adverse drug reaction following a hysterectomy. At 17, in 2004, Oscar competed in his first ever Paralympic Games, winning a bronze and gold medal at a world record time of 21.97 seconds. Three years later, he began racing able-bodied athletes in international competitions and made history at the 2012 Summer Olympic Games in London as the first double-legged amputee ever to compete in the tournament. Oscar did not win the 2012 Olympic crushing Olympics crashing out at the semi-finals, but his story and running blades, the cheetahs, had become so famous worldwide that the 2012 London Olympics Games was named most watched event in US history. Throughout the Olympics, he was an ambassador of the brand and his stocks rose even higher as he became known as the Blade Runner. An accolade to his lightning speed and famous cheetahs. Oscar inspired millions of people around the world, and his story was a bedrock of success for children, young people, and athletes hoping to break barriers to reach the highest levels of sport. Multi Paralympic gold medalist Oscar was described as a charming, polite, and sporting hero with boyish good looks. He had his first girlfriend, Vicky Miles, in 2006, and for Valentine in February 2007, he snuck over to her home at night, decorating the trees, fence, and driveway with 200 coloured balloons. His relationship with Reva was compared by local media to David Beckham with wife Victoria Beckham. Reva was a 29-year-old model, aspiring actress and law graduate with a degree from the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. Dingham was also a first domestic violence advocate. She had her first modelling shoot at age 15 and appeared in several TV commercials for top magazines. They met at the popular Formula One Grand Prix race track. Kailami, November the 4th, 2012. They quickly became friends and attended an award ceremony together. That same night, 
relationship with Pistorius Scott. However, the prosecution pressed for a charge of premeditated murder, saying the applicant shot an unarmed and innocent woman. Pistorius account of acting in self-defense when he shot his gun was branded as a fabrication or part of the pre-planning by the prosecution. The prosecution alleged that Pistorius and Steenkamp had gotten into a heated argument heard by neighbours the previous night that Oscar fired four shots through the door whilst knowing that she was standing behind the door. Oscar was also alleged to have a proven track record of domestic violence, though he was never arrested on any of the charges. CBS News in 2014 reported that in 2009 he had reportedly broken a woman's leg after slamming a door and then punching it at a house party. WhatsApp messages between Oscar and Reva were also revealed by NBC News, allegedly highlighting a relationship with a history of arguments and how Reva was afraid of him at times. Testimonies were also heard in court from Pistorius' former girlfriend, who claimed that he had a temper, cheated on her multiple times, and once fired his pistol out of an open top sunroof because he was angry. A policeman had stopped his car and touched his gun. Reva's mother spoke of how difficult her daughter's relationship with Pistorius was and confirmed that at the time of her death, Reva was not pregnant. Her sister, Simone Steenham, allegedly revealed a WhatsApp message from Reva to Pistorius that read, I can't be attacked by outsiders for dating you and be attacked by you, the one person I deserve protection from. Oscar Pistorius was found not guilty of premeditated murder and second degree murder on September the 11th, 2014. Although his actions were described as negligent, the trial judge, Judge Thugsire Masipa, found no evidence that he wanted to kill his girlfriend to Reba, but found him guilty of culpable homicide. As he acted too hastily and used excessive force, Oscar was to serve five years in jail and could be bailed after serving just one year in prison. The sentence incited outrage among women, women's right groups and advocates against rape and domestic violence in South Africa, sparking heated arguments in other parts of the world. The trial judge was fiercely criticised for failing to answer the key legal question, whether any reasonable person should have foreseen that firing so many bullets through a door was likely to cause death, whoever was thought to be on the other side. The manslaughter verdict was appealed and overturned by the Supreme Court of Appeal in Dece December 2015, binding Oscar guilty of murder on the principal dollars eventualis as he should have known that firing so many shots was likely to kill whoever was behind the locked door. In July 2016, Oscar Pistorius was sent back to jail for six years on a reduced standard 15-year minimum sentence sought by the prosecutors. Sixteen months later, in November 2007, the Supreme Court of Appeal accepted the argument of state prosecutors that his initial jail term was shockingly lenient and Oscar murder jail term was extended to 13 years and five months. In March 2023, Oscar Pistorius applied for parole after serving half of his 13-year sentence, but his request was denied as prison authorities argued he had failed to serve the minimum detention period required. In October of the same year, the Constitutional Court overturned the previous decision on his parole request, arguing that he had, he had in fact, served half of his sentence by March 21, 2023, and was therefore eligible for parole. The next month in October, the Department of Correctional Services approved January 5, 2024, as 
Cooper's story's release date on parole in a sentence that is, it was able to confirm that Oscar is a parolee effectively from 5th of January 2024. He was admitted into the system of community corrections and is now at home. After serving nine of his 13 years and five months murder sentence, Oscar Pistorius was finally released on parole on January the 5th, 2024. Until his sentence expires in December 2029, Oscar will remain under the supervision of South Africa's Department of Correctional Services under restrictions. So basically he's got restrictions on his movement when he's allowed to leave home. Total ban of alcohol consumption, orders to attend anger management and violence against women programs and mandatory community service until 2029. He's got to do all of that basically, even though he's out now. Speaking on Oscar Pistorius' release from jail on parole, Reva Steinkamp's mother, June Steinkamp, said that as a part of South Africa law, she accepted the terms of Pistorius' release. Has there been justice for Reva? Has Oscar served enough time? There can never be justice. Your loved one is never coming back, and no amount of time served will bring Reva back, June Steinkamp said. We who remain behind are the ones serving a life sentence. With the release of Oscar on parole, my only desire is that I will be allowed last years in peace, with my focus remaining on the Reva Rebecca Steinkamp Foundation previous legacy and that bit where she said everyone that gets left behind is the ones that are suffering and serving the life sentence <sighs> like that hit me deep that, that is literally it that's true like the people that it, 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 like the murderers and that it doesn't they don't get that life sentence really when it comes to it they don't suffer like the loved ones suffer like people that know the victim they're the ones that suffer, have to suffer basically the rest of their life knowing what happened to their loved one and it's just I don't personally I don't think people should be allowed out that early I'm sorry but at the end of the day what don't make sense to me is the fact that I know that he was scared and because he had previous burglaries and death threats which I understand is scary and it would make you paranoid but the fact that he woke up and didn't even notice his girlfriend was in bed beside him like he just woke up and just so randomly shot at the bathroom door like he didn't think to knock at the bathroom door first and ask who's there like calmly he didn't think to like tap next to him in bed like that's what I normally do like when I wake up and sometimes like, I'm like, is my partner downstairs or is he still in bed? I like, make sure that he's there. Like, I don't just assume. Like, it's just a bit stupid, to be honest, I think. Like, I don't know if I fully believe that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just weird because surely you'd know someone's sleeping next to you because you'd hear them breathing. 